Welcome to CalAdapt. This video is part of a series of short video tutorials on how to access information on CalAdapt and use CalAdapt tools. This video presents the Local Climate Change Snapshot tool, a tool you can use to access basic climate change information about a place of interest. First, you can navigate to the Local Climate Change Snapshot tool page. If you don't have the URL saved somewhere, you can simply go to cal-adapt.org then click on Tools in the upper right corner, and then click on Local Climate Change Snapshot. The Tools landing page prompts you to select the place you're interested in. You can select a place in a few ways. If you're interested in an address, you can type the address in this bar here with the Address button selected below. Let's say I'm interested in the possible climate future of Joshua Tree National Park. I know the Visitor Center address is 6554 Park Boulevard in Joshua Tree, California, so I type that in here. Then I hit Enter and so select the correct address from the list of drop-down options. When I do that, the map zooms in on the address I selected so that I can make sure I've got it right. Looks good. You'll note that just below the location search bar, there are options to select a range of spatial boundaries. If I click on county, for example, I can select a county by name or by clicking the county in the inset map. Right now, I can see that San Bernardino County is selected since the county is named in the text box and outlined in black in the map. The tool will then return data that is spatially averaged over the entire county. Other options for spatial boundaries are city, census tract, and Huck 10 watersheds, which is a hydrologic unit. For example, I can toggle on the Huck 10 watershed layer to explore watersheds in the area. Zooming out, I can see all the watershed boundaries now in the inset map. I can click inside the boundary of a watershed I'm interested in, and the name populates in the bar on the left. Here, for example, is the Salton Sea Huck 10 watershed. The same process applies for selecting a census tract or city boundary. Note, however, that for the city option, there are some places that are unincorporated or not enclosed in a city boundary. When I select the city option after looking at the Huck 10 boundary for the Salton Sea, I am told that the location can't be found. I would have to select a city polygon, like Bombay Beach, right here, for example. Anyway, let's go back to the visitor center at Joshua Tree National Park. To do that, I click Address, and then I type in the address in the bar here, hit Enter, select it from the list, and double check in the map that I've got the location selected that I want. Then I click Generate Snapshot to move to the next screen. I'm now in the data display portion of the Local Climate Change Snapshot tool. At the top, I'm reminded of the location that I selected in the map. There's also a bar where I can toggle among climate variables, temperature, precipitation, and wildfire. The first variable displayed is temperature. Within the temperature page, I can choose from a handful of temperature statistics using the drop-down menu. Below that drop-down menu is a description of the statistic. For example, when I select extreme heat days, I can read that this is the number of days in a year when the maximum daily temperature exceeds 104.7 degrees Fahrenheit. The note here explains that the threshold temperature used for extreme heat is location specific and is defined as the 98th percentile value of historical temperatures from 1961 to 1990 between April and October. This sort of text is interspersed throughout the tool and we encourage you to read it for additional information about the climate change data displayed here. Moving down, there is a graph that visualizes projected trends, in this case for extreme heat days, the graph contains four data series represented by different colors and lines. The gray line here shows historical extreme heat day patterns for this location. The teal line shows the projected average of all climate models for a medium emission scenario, also referred to as Representative Concentration Pathway, or RCP, 4.5. The shaded teal area is the full range of all the climate models for the medium emission scenario. The purple data captures a high emission scenario, representative concentration pathway 8.5, showing both the model ensemble average 
in the model ensemble range. Lastly, if you want to see modeled historical data, I can toggle that on here as the TAN data series. Typically, climate scientists recommend that you compare projected modeled data to historical modeled data. If you want more information about this graph, you'll see links on the left. For example, you can take a walkthrough tour of the figure and learn more about best practices for working with climate data. Beneath the graph, there is a table that captures statistics for three typical 30-year planning periods, mid-century, end of century, and a baseline historical modeled time period. In this case, the historical baseline to compare against is four extreme heat days per year on average during the 30-year historical period from 1961 to 1990. In other words, the models suggest that any given year during that time period saw four extreme heat days on average. Below that, the first column in the table shows the change from baseline that is projected. For example, for a medium emission scenario, an additional 22 extreme heat days are projected to happen per year on average between 2035 and 2064, the mid-century time period, when compared against the modeled historical baseline. The second column shows the 30-year average. So under a medium emission scenario, any given year in the mid-century planning period is projected to see 26 extreme heat days on average. The last column gives you the 30-year range. This is the range of the averages from all climate models over the 30-year period. There are 32 climate models contributing to this ensemble. So put another way, to determine the 30-year range, we averaged the projected annual extreme heat days over the 30-year period for each model. Then we selected the model showing the highest annual average count of extreme heat days and the model showing the lowest annual average count of extreme heat days to calculate the range. This is a way of capturing spread or uncertainty in model results. For more information, you can click About This Table on the left. Lastly, at the bottom of the page, you can find additional resources to help you get more information and interpret the climate model outputs. These footnotes here offer additional details and references. At the end, there are links to additional CALADAP tools and resources like California's Adaptation Clearinghouse and the fourth Climate Change Assessment Regional Reports. Returning to the top of the page, you can explore other variables like precipitation and wildfire. If you want to download a PDF report of these results, you can do so by clicking the Create Report button. You can also download figures and data with buttons below the charts and tables. We encourage you to click around to explore projected climate change in California. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at support at cal-adapt.org.